Hello everyone! Today we're going to go through the steps of how to make a guild in Star Wars The Old Republic. This is going to be a video about the physical steps to create a guild, not the moral or uh, mentality of creating a guild or the types of things you should run while having a guild. We're going to go through how to create it, how to get a guild bank, how to use the rank system, and how to get a flagship and use it. So first off, the very first thing you need is a total of at least four players. They do not need to be all in the same room. They could still be on their starter planets, but you do need yourself plus three other players. These can be either friends who are helping you create the guild and are going to be a part of it, or these can be random players who are temporarily volunteering to help. Uh, players are often recruited through general chat. Hey, can you help me make a guild? Cause I need four players. You can leave afterwards if you want. The first thing you're going to do is have those players whisper you. They're going to message you privately so that you can easily invite them, especially if they're not in the same room as you. So I'm going to put the call out to my community. Hey guys, can you whisper me? And I'll invite you to the guild because we need a total of four people. The command to whisper or send a private message is slash whisper, like pss, 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 slash whisper. Um, my name, my character's name is Satrista colon and then they can type their message so may i join please and of course i can't whisper myself so we've got our players we're going to right click their names and invite to group right click your name invite to group and right click in name invite to group um if you are unable to get them to whisper you maybe uh they're they're just really struggling with that aspect you can invite them manually for you. the way to invite someone to your group manually is you type slash invite space and then their character name for example uh this character's name is noranti i could type out noranti and invite them to the group that way however sometimes uh we're bad at typing for example i typed that in wrong so it wouldn't work or sometimes they have special characters in their name that you can't easily type on the keyboard so here's a little trick um you can still have them uh whisper you and you can copy it or uh you can type slash who and go to the who tab if you know part of their name you can type in like hot and then you can right click it from there to invite to group as well that's uh, very useful if your, your player has special characters in their name but you can type part of it so now that we have four players in our group we can get our guild started hooray so the section we need to go to is the strongholds and crew skills section of the fleet i'm imperial side if you are Republic side, it will be in a separate section. So just look for strongholds and crew skills by opening your map with the M key. An important thing to know is Republic players and Imperial players cannot be in the same guild. They are completely separate factions. So in the supplies and crew skills or strongholds and crew skills section, we have this little area. Once again, it'll be different Republic side. And uh, we're looking for the guild registrar. She is just a uh, NPC character here. And she will give you an error message when you right click her if you do not have a total of four people in your group. So you'll need to pick the name of your guild. I'm picking the name summons. And you need a whole 5,000 credits. And it does take a bit of time to actually create the guild. So here we go. Once it's created, that window will disappear. And you can go in the social window on your menu and click guild. Now there's a bunch of different stuff on here. So I'm going to go one thing at a time and come back to the rest later. So first off, you can see the log right here. Here's the most recent things that happened in the guild. Here's the full list. Uh, not a lot has happened. Um, and you can see that we have only four people in the guild so far. I did, however, have some more people whisper me and I want to invite them as well. For example, Diona has whispered me and I can right click their name and invite them to group. But uh, I want to invite them to the guild, not to the group. So what do I do? Still have that player whisper you with the slash whisper space your name colon their message function because that will allow you to right uh, left click their name just like click on their name in the whisper and you'll be able to highlight their name press Control c and then you'll be able to manually invite them to the guild so you can type slash ginvite 
and uh, that is short for guild invite slash ginvite, which I totally spelled wrong right here. Ginvite space and then their character name, and then hit enter. I believe Diona may have switched characters in the meantime. <laughs> Here we go. We were able to invite another player via Whisper. So we got Hot Hail invited. Who else do we got here? Nantia. Invite. We got Bibelite. And you can use that same function to invite a player through Who as well. If you're having trouble finding them, I remember BB. E-L, but I forgot the rest. You can search with slash who and then hit enter and it'll open this panel with the who tab. Um, there is uh, one more way to invite people. So I'm actually going to kick Bebelite out of the guild using the guild roster. That's the second tab here. I was like, oh no, I don't want that person in the guild. Aha, right click their name and remove them from the guild. <gasps> if you're nearby to someone, you will also have their character portrait visible once you click on them. So I click on them and it shows up right here. Mine's super big. Yours probably looks a bit smaller. And you can invite them to the guild if you are physically nearby to them. If you're not physically nearby, you need to use the slash ginvite little, little trick. Um, another thing uh, lots of guilds like to do is the second they invite someone, they can... Uh, Go guild, set a member note. So if this is your friend, your friend in real life and their name is Bob, you can set a member note that says they're Bob so that you don't forget who Raren or Norantia or Nantia is with all our crazy fantasy names. Another option that the guilds offer is ranks. So right now, uh, I'm seeing the online list. I can also see who's, who's not online by clicking the show offline as well. Um, button. And right now everyone's a recruit except me. I'm, I'm the guild master. You can go to the ranks tab and you'll notice there are some set up by default. There's going to be recruit, which is the default. They can, the only permissions they have is the ability to talk in guild chat and see guild chat. So that's a great first rank. And each rank of these default ones, you can either remove it with the remove button if you don't really need it. Or you can click it and you can uh, edit it. So you can uh, call it a different name by removing it and recreating it if you want to. So I'm going to remove the member rank. And I'm actually, you can add a new one that way. Potato, you know. And you can set all those uh, permissions manually. There's also, you can take one like the officer one that already has some presets ones that you can use. So these, this uh, officer rank can view guild chat, they can uh, invite people and remove people from the guild, they can edit the message of the day, or I can say no, you can't edit the message of the day and remove that. So perfect, I think I'm gonna promote some of these people to officer, maybe remove the potato rank, so that they have the ability to invite other players, or I maybe don't want to give them that so that I have all the power or the ability to invite people is restric restricted to only a few players who I uh, who know what's going on. Um, so we can go to the roster tab, right click on their name, go to guild, set rank, and officer. Woohoo! Set rank, officer. Guild, set rank, officer. Guild, set rank, officer. Guild, set rank, officer. Do, 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 do. We, we got a big, big starter guild with uh, characters from level 2 all the way to 75. Oh, that's me. I don't need to set my own rank. So now we've got Bebelite is a recruit, Raren is a recruit, and a bunch of other members are officers. Yeah. So now they will be able to use that same uh, Ginvite G invite trick that I talked about earlier or invite anyone who's physically nearby to them. Um, I do recommend that member note. If you're inviting more players you know rather than just random people, uh, you can right click them and yeah, tell your uh, people who have the ability to invite to do this too if this is what you choose to do. So guild set member note. Potato. 
or whatever else that you want to leave so you kind of know who that person is for later sweet so now we've got our <laughs> our officers are also using a function called guild officers chat by default if you type slash g now um you can uh, type in guild chat. This is a shared chat that everyone in your guild can uh, talk to. Hello. Hey, say hello, everybody. Don't do it in all caps like I did. Um, and this is shared across all planets. You don't have to be nearby. You don't have to be in a party chat anymore. You just can use this to talk to everyone while doing going about your day, organize activities within the guild, stuff like that. Um, very, very useful function of a guild chat. And unfortunately, it's only per character. So if uh, if Hot Hail here goes and hops over to their Imperial agent, um, they will have to get reinvited on their other character. The other function that my my new officers are using is the officer chat. Um, so to talk in normal chat, normal guild chat, I type slash G. That's probably the fastest way. But you can also access all your chats here. So guild and then officer. Um, I don't really recommend using this a lot. If you want to have like important discussions about the guild, I recommend doing it off the game so that there's some type of record of it for later. Like let's say you've got three officers and you want to discuss, uh, should we, should we do an operation? Uh, next week, maybe one of them is offline. If you have that chat over Discord or over a text message group or a Facebook group or a forum or whatever you want to use, then someone who's missing can go back and see that later. And this is especially useful for when you're having more serious discussions, like should we um, add an Imperial side guild to our Republic side guild or something like that. But there is a private officer chat like saying, oh my God, that one player is being very rude should we kick them out and then you can talk with them without having to put it in the in the guild chat there <laughs> and yes says yes the next thing that we can add to our guild is going to be a guild bank and you will need eight different players in the guild to get this started um, i believe it's eight uh, eight characters even though it says eight members so if you want you can like have one of your players uh, go log out into another character like seven times and <laughs> just invite those. <laughs> um, the only time, you, as far as I can tell, you need actual people is when you start the guild, you need four people total. Um, and when you go to make a guild bank, you need eight members total and 600,000 credits. Those credits need to be in your inventory of the guild leader. So, for example, if... Uh, the wonderful Bebelite here, our poor recruit who doesn't get promoted, wants to help uh, contribute to uh, creating the guild bank. Um, they would have to trade me the credits, and I could just right-click them and trade. Once I have those 600,000 credits and 8 people, you can find a purple guild bank in the same sections. They're actually kind of all over. This is the Strongholds and Crew Skills section where you create your guild. There's also going to be some around the center. There's also going to be a section in the Galactic Trade Market. Just look for the purple bank and it'll give you an error message if you don't have enough people yet. So, yes. Apparently my guild only has himself. <laughs> I think we got into a bug because we... <laughs> <laughs> deleted this guild and recreated this guild so let me let me log out and log in real fast and see if that fixes things we're doing it live <laughs> do you have to have other players in your group to start a guild yes you will need a total of four players in your group to actually start the guild um, another player in chat is saying, because we're doing this live, is that uh, if you want, you can give everybody the power to invite. So it kind of depends what type of guild you want to make. Do you want everyone to have the ability to invite? Um, personally, I like more curated guilds that are made up of people you kind of know. Um, some people like really, really big guilds, so you get lots of boosts and bonuses and stuff. Okay, let's see if the guild bent thing works now. Yes, okay. <laughs> the game no longer was confused. <laughs> um, 
So once you've purchased a guild bank with your, your eight characters and your eight hundred or 600,000 credits, not everyone by default has access to it. So we first have the ranks in your guild that you can edit. But on top of that, there is a separate, completely separate set of permissions just for the guild bank. So as the guild leader, you can use the manage button to edit those ranks. Um, I believe these are the hardest things to edit in the game in terms of rosters and ranks and permissions. Um, pretty much only the guild leader can do it. If I remember right, your officers cannot help you. So if you have a crafting officer, uh, show them what this looks like and show them what permissions are and aren't allowed. So are you guys ready to start some drama? Okay. I bought some items to put in the guild bank. If you guys want to throw some stuff, random stuff in there too, like roti and mayonnaise sandwiches, feel free while I go grab this from the mailbox. I don't, I don't even know if you guys have permission at all. <laughs> so I created this guild just for the video. It's not going to be a real guild. I just had one of the members say, is it wrong if I invite a player to our guild? They were just looking for it. I didn't tell them what the guild is meant for. This is why you may want ex to limit your, your ranks to who can invite and who cannot. For example, I didn't want anybody random in here because uh, this is the worst guild ever. I'm going to be turning off guild chat when I'm done. <laughs> um, so right now, by default, our members don't have access to the guild bank. Um, so as the guild leader, I'm going to go into the purple guild bank by right clicking it. I'm going to go manage and I'm going to start with uh, maybe the recruit rank. So it, right now it says uh, they can't take out any credits. They can't withdraw credits. They can't summon people. Um, they can't uh, access the individual bank vaults either. So we can start with an, the bank vault number one. And that's what you get by default is you get um, all these slots right here. And uh, you can put in credits or take out credits. So uh, I'm going to start with manage. And I'm going to edit my first bank vault and start with there. So we're going to change it to free stuff. Sweet! Can people see it? For recruit? Yes. Can people allow things? Uh, allowed to add things? Yes. How many things can you take out per break? I'm going to leave it at zero and watch the chaos commence. Oh, I guess I need to save that. Apply. Now, as you can see, when I'm flipping through my two ranks, maybe you have more ranks than me, they each have uh, different settings. So now I can say my officer can view stuff, add stuff, and apply that. But let's say I only want my recruit to have the ability to withdraw like five items a week so that they don't steal the entire guild bank. That would be a very smart thing to do. So you can set five withdrawals per week and that is per guild tab. And you can also give the tab a little icon. So our free stuff icon is going to be like a sweet, sweet datacron. Yeah. So you can pick the icon and the name. And the officers, I'm going to do something similar. I've, I've decided I don't trust them fully yet because sometimes people are bad eggs and I just met these people. And uh, you need to decide how much is good for you. So I'm going to be putting a lot of crafting materials in there. So I'm going to put 200. So they can't steal everything in a day or per week, but they can, they can take some stuff. Um, the next setting that you can set for recruit and officer, whatever your ranks are, are the credits. Um, so this is something, if you have the credits, I recommend that you uh, take a good look at and decide what you want to do. For example, uh, in my main guild that I'm in, we have, you are not allowed, nobody's allowed to withdraw credits except for the crafting officer because we trust them to decide what we're doing with them. Um, full members can repair their armor and I can say they can use credits from the guild bank up to, I don't know, 300,000 credits per week. If we don't have a lot of credits, I might want to turn that off. And summons is another really cool function. Um, the ability to summon also costs credits, but it's separate out, so they can't steal credits, like just take them right out of the bank. But they can have the ability to spend uh, guild credits on summoning. And we'll go over that once we have a flagship. 
And you can also choose to show or not show the ledger. I gotta save. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. I don't want the recruits to see who's taking stuff out and putting stuff in, but I do want the officers to be able to check that. So cool. Now our guild uh, guildmates over here, they can go into the guild bank and see what's in there right now. Oh, someone put some nice free stuff in there. So as a guild leader, I have unlimited withdraws, deposits, everything you want to say like that. Um, our recruits now under the manage tab can take out five items a week. And our officers can take out 200 items per week. So now I'm going to put I put some rare stuff in the free stuff tab. I put a bunch of crafting materials. Do you guys want to come take out an item or two and show how that works? Now, an important thing you might want to tell your members if you're putting crafting materials in is shift left click. Will allow you to take out just how many you need. Otherwise, they'll try and take the whole stack, which can be really frustrating if uh if you have a limit of 200 to start with so you can see members are like taking things out live someone just took those fractiles <gasps> it was you you took the fractiles so be aware once an item goes into a tab that is accessible by other members they can take it and um bioware pretty much will for the most part, unless someone does a sneaky, sneaky, peeky, tricky thing or something like that. If you put it in there, people are allowed to take it out and Bioware won't like compensate you if you're like, I put that Varactyl in there, but it was only supposed to be for officers, but a member took it because I didn't set the permissions right. Bioware will not help this with you. It's not considered scam. It's considered you set your guild up this way. So make sure to carefully check your settings and also carefully check who you are giving permission to. Um, for example, one sneaky beaky thing that can happen is let's say I've chosen my officers carefully. I've decided these people are quite trustworthy or I know them in real life or I've played with them quite a while. But uh, another player messaged me and said, Oh, I'm I'm so-and-so's alt character. Can I have an invite? You'll want to do uh, maybe double check over your chat system if they're an officer. Like if you have like Discord or Facebook or text, whatever, double check it's them. And another kind of simple way to check is if their legacy matches. Um, their legacy name will show up here. Uh, but be aware that you can make duplicate ones. But if they don't match for sure, what shows up in the offline uh, members for that officer who's already in there, then <laughs> you know something's up. All right, so. <laughs> Vadius says, that was my one million credits you took. Yes, you can. Hang on, where are you at? Are you <laughs> this is from earlier. We, uh, we were creating a fake guild and I accidentally stole their credits, but I couldn't figure out whose it was. Here you go. So once again, if your members put in credits or items, the other players can take them, including the guild master. So be aware, <laughs> be aware and kind of it's good to have some rules. Um, so, for example, um, we can get some more tabs. And what a lot of guilds like to do is make a tab that's like free stuff, free for all. Like, I don't care. Just just take the stuff. It's random stuff I picked up along the way. You can have it. Um, they like to make uh, additional tabs that have stronger more restrictive settings but other players can still see them which is really cool so let's add some more guild tabs so the first additional tab so unlocking the guild bank costs six hundred thousand. adding another uh tab is one million credits it has to be hang on i believe it has to be in the person who's clicking its inventory rather than in the guild bank yes so that came out of my inventory rather than our guild bank funds which we can see right here so i'm gonna put this to be uh crafting materials which uh, i like to do um in my main guild oh well okay crafting i like to do that in my main guild i set up a tab just for crafting materials and then, so the free stuff tab is just a free for all. Take whatever you want. Um, and anybody can put items in there and anyone can take any out. And then the crafting tab, I'll put a crafting material so people can level up crafting. And uh, I do want to set like a limit of how many people can take out. So maybe I'll put like a hundred free crafting materials for my recruits. 
And then for my officers, they, they can craft their little hearts out. There's my thank you. So now we have two tabs with separate permissions, and we'll set the free stuff one to be uh, zero withdrawals per week, and the recruits will be zero withdrawals per week. And that zero means they can have I unlimited. Have a feeling about this. <laughs> um, the next step is going to be add another bank vault. So that's two million credits for the third bank vault. Once again, it needs to be in my inventory, not in the guild's credits. And this one I'm going to put rare stuff. I'm going to click on the icon. What, what looks like a rare stuff? Oh, a little gold icon. Nice. Oh, you know what? Zero is not unlimited. Just just so you know, you might want to put like 99999 instead. My bad. <laughs> zero means zero. So in this new rare stuff tab, I'm going to make it viewable. Uh, people are allowed to add stuff, but they're not going to be allowed to take anything out. Um, so it's going to be kind of like a, a vault. And I can put stuff in, or they can put stuff in, but nobody can steal it. And maybe I will dole it out um, during special occasions, or maybe we're saving up bits and pieces for something to unlock. I see you dancing, yes. I see you guys dancing in the corner. That's my guildmates. <laughs> Did you get your million credits back, Vadodius? Good. I hope so. <laughs> you got scammed. Okay. So the next step that you'll be able to do after you've got a guild bank and you've played around with that, so that requires 600,000 credits and eight members, and the next thing you can get is a guild flagship. And this is the really when things start getting cool. So to unlock a guild flagship, I think I actually have to go to the flagship's uh, stronghold section. No, right here. So in the same section, in the strongholds and crew skills, it'll be a separate spot, uh, Republic side, but same uh, same name section, near where you created your guild. There's going to be a panel here. When you roll over it, it'll say something like uh, guild flagship directory. Um, so flagships are a type of player housing in Star Wars The Old Republic. Your personal player housing is just for you. You can invite your friends, but they can't attend by default. Guild housing is super cool as anyone in the guild can um, automatically enter that player housing and take advantage of whatever's in there. So to get one, it costs 8 million credits. Um, it actually used to cost like 50 million, so this is quite cheap. Um, this is something that you're expected to earn amongst your whole guild. So for example, right now we've got eight members in the guild. Maybe they can each contribute a million credits. In this case, I'm just going to pay for it all myself. The difference about this one is the credits need to be uh, in your guild bank rather than your inventory like the guild tabs. So if I purchase more guild tabs, so we did uh, 600,000, a million, two million. Next one's going to be three and a half million. Next one's going to be 7 million. Next one's going to be 15 million. Next one's going to be 30 million. Next one's going to be six. How many do we have? I don't have enough credits for the next one. <laughs> anybody? Anybody got any credits? No, I spent all mine. I was not expecting that. Oh boy. <laughs> we might have to sell some stuff on <laughs> it. shot. Um, but these credits need to be in the guild bank. So how do you deposit credits to the guild bank? You need to go to the deposit section. You need to uh, type in how many you want to put. So I want to put 800, uh, 8 million to get that flagship. But be aware, as soon as I put these in, Anyone who in the Manage tab has permission to take those in the credit allowance, luckily I've got it set to zero for both of them, um, will be able to, to steal them or take them. So be aware when you're putting it in, it can be taken out if you don't have your permission set. So now we have 8 million credits in our guild bank. We can go over to our flagship, uh, the terminal, and we can purchase. Hooray, hooray, hooray. So you'll to get a flagship, there aren't really any requirements as far as I know, but you will need the guild bank. And to get the guild bank, you need eight characters in the guild. So yay, eight million credits, let's go. Now what you can tell your members is feel free to come to the flagship. 
Um, so to get to the flagship, you go to the strongholds panel. Um, that's the U key by default. And there's going to be the personal tab is the default one. And then the guild tab is your guild strongholds. And we're going to go travel to our horror class Imperial Dreadnought. The Republic and the Imperial ones look different. So we are actually going to rename our flagship before we go anywhere. And we're going to rename it the Hispaniola. A lot of ship names start with the, uh, just kind of a tradition. Yes, I want to rename my flagship to the Hispaniola. Um, we're going to travel there. And all you have to do is tell your members to click that um, travel button. They And everybody in the guild has default access to just go there. So that's really great. Really fun place to meet up with your friends. So super cool. This is our flagship. Hell yeah. Look at that. That's awesome. So it costs us 8 million credits to unlock. It looks like some of our, our guildmates already made their way here. It's very, very empty. Very empty. There's no, no decorations or anything. It's just a blank ship. You can even ride your speeder around in here. And uh, what I really like to do is I like to set up a little base of operations for playing the game. <laughs> not for not for looking cool, but for being useful. So I'm going to switch my interface to a more normal one. Sorry, it's going to be smaller. So if you have uh, the guild master title, like you own the guild, as soon as you go to the flagship, you're going to have this little box pop up and it's going to say, uh, it doesn't really say what it is, but there's going to be an edit mode button. <laughs> It's not a very useful box. Yeah, yeah, it's a tutorial. We know how this works. And when you press edit mode, you're going to see all these little boxes pop up. And this is where you can place uh, decorations in the game. Um, my character has a lot of decorations because I've been collecting them over the years. And I'll show you how to uh, unlock some of those. So you can get these from flashpoints, from the GTN, from other players, from operations, from crafting. That is a whole nother guide by itself, of which I've covered quite a few different ways to get decorations. So right clicking on a hook will allow you to choose a decoration that can go there. Now you'll notice I'm like, hmm, I actually have a lot of these decorations, but why does it say I have zero decorations I can place down on this hook, even though I have some of these? That's because our guild does not have them yet. So there are two different ways that you can add a decoration to your guild. The first is by donating it to your uh, guild bank, and I'll show you that option in a minute or two. But the better way is to go into your strongholds panel for your personal stronghold decorations right here. There's a little kind of metal symbol. And once this box has popped up, you'll see, oh, look, okay, I still have all my, my decorations available here. Um, let's, uh, let's put some trash cans in here. Once you've picked a decoration that you have, most, not all, decorations have the ability to purchase for your guild a copy, a copy-paste of that decoration. So if I want to buy a garbage can for my guild and I already have collected, or anyone in the guild has collected, um, so you can have, maybe your friend has a, a garbage can and they can do this too. Purchase for guild. And they range between 25,000 credits and 50,000 credits. They're kind of, they're kind of all slightly different. There's 75 and, uh, very, very few decorations are not available this way. So I can purchase one copy of the trash can. And you know what? We need lots. I only have seven trash cans on my character. Why? I don't know why I have so many. But I can purchase like an infinite amount. So if I just want to line my flagship with uh, garbage cans, I can do that. Um, so this is a very fun thing about decorating flagships or guild strongholds versus your personal one. Is maybe you're not talking about a trash can. Maybe you're talking about um, Tithe's Font of Sacrifice. And this is really expensive on the GTN. You can just purchase... As many copies as you want for that low, low unlock price. The only time it starts getting expensive is if you're buying something you need a ton of that's not pricey. For example, like you want a hundred chairs to make a, 
a little amphitheater room that's going to add up. So the first thing I would recommend doing is picking a room that you can set up as your base of operations. I like to put it in here because this is where you load in. The Republic side is mirrored for the most part on the inside of the ship, if not the outside. So I like to start by putting down a guild bank. Oh, someone already donated some. Nice. Um, so otherwise I'd have to go buy one from the GTN and uh, unlock it. So we're going we're gonna to make the worst, worst looking thing we can. But it's going to be super useful. So I'm right clicking the hooks and I'm looking in the utilities section or I'm typing the name of the decoration. So the ones that I like to put always and forever are a purple purple guild bank, a green cargo bay for your personal bank, and a yellow legacy stronghold storage. And the last one I like to put every time, like the bare minimum, is a mailbox. <gasps> we don't have a mailbox! Oh my god! What kind of guild are we? A guild that literally started five seconds ago is the answer. So I've got mailboxes galore. So I could either craft one and place it in the guild bank, or I can just unlock it that way. So let's put that mailbox there. And now I'm going to show you how to put decorations in the guild bank, which is a separate way to do things. Oh, I guess we need, we need a galactic trade network kiosk. Okay, okay. Come on. This is the, the joys of setting up a guild from scratch. And this can be a lot of fun the first time you do it. Um, it's very exciting. Galactic trade network. See, now I only have to pay 50,000 credits to put it uh, versus buying one on the GTN or with cartel coins or whatever else crafting it myself. Galactic trade network kiosk. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's find a, a cheap decoration. We're going to search for chair. Okay, basic metal chair. Sweet! There's a pile of eight. I can get those for free. And a Mekshaw hideout chair. Sweet! That was a very bad deal. Don't tell anybody. We're, we're testing. Okay, so I now have two decorations in my inventory. I have two ways that I can donate these. So the first is I can open up the guild bank. And I can drag and drop it on to the uh, guild banks to donate it. It'll say, do you wish to donate this decoration to the guild? This will only make this available in guild-owned strongholds and flagships. So if I say yes, then that will get donated to the guild. It will not become an inventory item. Instead, it will now just be, like, in in this guild panel. So here's a chair. Chair! Oh, yeah, yeah. We got, we got a chair. We're golden. And one of our guildmates is sleeping on top of the banks and on the floor. Oh, my. And then if I wanted to donate a decoration so someone else can take it for their own personal stronghold, uh, I need, can do the same thing, but I need to say no. And it'll become an actual item in the bank. <laughs> um, and and then the last way I could have done it is if I have sweet, sweet chair. Chair action. See, I don't have any other chairs in my guild list. I can once again go to my strongholds list. Go to my personal tab. Go find that super expensive, sweet, amazing chair. See where's it? Where's a cool chair? Put it in the furniture category. Oh, that's some really sweet Jedi chairs. These are actually crafted. These are really cool. Jedi temple chairs. I'll go back to editing. Put, put a chair over here. Because apparently you guys like to sit on the floor. Oh, that one requires a bigger hook. Oh. So that's a double chair, and it's not going to fit on that tiny little green hook. So let's uh, switch the layout of this uh, big purple one with all the green little ones. So to do that, you can right-click a hook, go Layouts, and choose a different one, and apply it. And now I've got different size hooks for those chairs. Jedi Temple chairs. Nice! There we go! Oh, so beautiful! 
Um, so this is what I would consider the bare, bare bones of setting up a little crafting area for your flagship. Um, you can also include a modification station. I don't think you need those anymore, but it's kind of fun to have. Um, I like to put the three Jawa vendors. I like to put the decoration vendor. Um, I like to put pretty much any item that can be considered useful. I'd probably put another mailbox beside the GTN. Um, there's also GTNs you can get for the wall or for the uh, banks for the floor if you want to. Lots of lots of fun little little stuff you can get for your guild that's uh, very useful. The rest, oh yeah, I like appearance modification station in there too. Just everything so that uh, your guildmates feel like they can come here and hang out while they're uh, maybe crafting or sorting their bank or working on their gear, whatever else. The rest um, of the flagship, and I think for most guilds, is just for fun. So you can uh, just make it look really cool. Let's see, do we have any, do I have any thrones on this server? <laughs> So I can I can be Empress of this guild. Yeah, we need the where's the big old scary sparkly one? Yeah, there we go. So this one's a really rare one. Since I have a copy on my character, once again, I only have to pay fifty thousand credits to unlock it. And let's put that down on the floor. Throne show unlock to make it easier and place oh it's backwards um to edit any decorations that are facing funky you'll need to right click the hook they're on and then you can play with these sliders <laughs> oh yeah, yeah if i want to sit on my chair i can type slash chair there's all kinds of fun commands that you and your guildmates can use for um posing photos okay we're going to continue on in a second Alright, next step uh, that you can do, this is very optional. I think once you have this going, you've pretty much got everything that you need for, for a decent sized guild. Even if you have just a small group of friends, having this little section here is super useful. Um, however, if you like the decorating aspect, if you like the thrones, or you want to make a, a mess hall, or you want to make a library, or whatever else on your ship, there's a couple more areas to decorate. There's a um, little escape pod area. There's a whole section over here, a little officer's deck. And then you're gonna notice there's a little room back here with an elevator. The elevator will let you travel on it, but the additional rooms are not unlocked. Um, so I'll run up to this door and it's like, oh no, I can't get in. And it's gonna be like that for every floor. When you right click that door, it'll tell you um, what it's gonna cost to unlock it. So it's gonna cost 5 million credits that comes out of the guild bank. We have a whole 10,000 right now. And it's also going to cost a flagship plans command framework. And there's going to be different flagship plans for the different um, floors. And so these are essentially a very expensive item that I'm not going to be able to show you today because I'm on a server where I just spent all my credits unlocking guild bank tabs. Um, to... Uh, essentially unlock these you gain an item called encryptions and these encryptions can be combined to make these uh, higher tier items that uh, will unlock the additional rooms so if you ever run conquest and we can actually do that right now you will get some of these encryptions i think now is a good time to go over conquest okay so once you have a ship, being able to access Conquest is the next big thing on the list that you have available and it's very, very useful. So if you're the Guildmaster or you're an officer with permission, you can go to Mission Log and Conquest. So this is something everybody has access to, even people not in a guild. It's a way of doing things each week gaining points within the week, and then you get these rewards. So gain 50,000 points from this list, ta-da, you get these things. If you're on a level 75 character, these things are actually a really great reward. And if you're in a guild, you get additional rewards uh, if your guild meets their overall target. So, when you go to Conquest, 
and then you can go to guild invasions as the guild leader you can pick a planet to invade for the most part there's going to be a let me see if i can make this bigger for you guys just a second where's the one called way too big and there it is So here we're in guild invasions. There's going to be a small yield planet, a medium yield planet, and a large yield planet. If you are a baby guild with like four to eight people, especially if you're not going hard, um, you'll probably want to pick the small yield one. And this is mostly every week. Some weeks it's slightly different. Uh, the difference between them is how many points as a guild, like everyone in the guild will naturally contribute to these points. Um, they don't have to like donate them or anything um it's usually about five hundred thousand for a small yield two million for a medium yield and five million for a large yield five million would be quite a bit for like four four to eight players um but you can you can switch each planet each week so if you feel like you can go for a harder one next week you can start small and work your way up so um to actually uh, invade a guild or uh, a planet you can pick your small yield and you'll click invade planet however uh, it resets each tuesday morning and if you're too far into the week you can't <laughs> you can't go invade so i'm doing this on a monday i'd probably have to wait till tuesday to go invade a planet lots of players um who run more organized guilds try and invade a planet as soon as possible tuesday morning sometimes they'll set a member whose whose uh, duty it is to go uh invade that planet because the rewards are amazing um so unfortunately i can't invade it and show you uh how easy it is to get these rewards but you get um oh i'm below level 75 so i don't get the 75 rewards but uh, you get an easy 50,000 credits you get a rare crafting material um, if I was level 75 i'd get a big old bundle of tech fragments which are the end game currency for gear and you get these encryptions. So what a lot of guilds do is they request, uh, hey guys, we're going to unlock the command level of our flagship. That one we were trying to go in that closed door before. Please choose a command encryption when it gives you a choice. Otherwise, some guilds say, eh, I don't care about the unlocking the rest of the flagship. It's really expensive. We don't really, we're not into roleplay, so it's not super big for us. Um, otherwise, you can just pick any of these and just sell it <laughs> on a GTN. And if you're a growing guild that has credits, but not, um, not a lot of players to earn encryptions or donate them, you can just buy the encryptions on the GTN, but they are very, very, very expensive. Um, it's kind of hilarious how expensive they are. So that's for the guild invasion. So if you have a guild, do invade a planet, even on just a small yield, um, every week on Tuesday. I think you can do it for a few days afterwards as well, um, as it will get any members in your guild basically some free rewards if they are playing the game actively. So the way it works is the player must meet their personal goal, which is uh, 50,000. And watch this. You guys want to see something hilarious? I'm going to go to my combat proficiencies I'm under level 75 I'm gonna reset them and I'm gonna assign a single point boom I just got 30,000 out of 50,000 points <laughs> they might change that in the future but there's some objectives that are super super easy and I do have a list of easy conquest objectives on soterista.com uh, solo objectives for those of you who don't really like to group up but do like being in a guild. And lastly, also low level uh, conquest objectives that are available. And uh, if you have a stronghold bonus, if you personally, not your guild, have extra strongholds, you can get up to 150% bonus, which is why mine's so high. Yours, if you don't have any strongholds, might be something closer to like 15,000 or something like that. Uh, so if you're low level, really easy one right now is set a combat proficiency uh, utility point. And if you're a high level, a really easy one is gain any reputation item. I like to do the, the first space mission. Um, so the next uh, thing you can do is uh, instruct your guildmates how this works. So they need to get the 50,000 points between Tuesday and uh, the end of Monday, basically. So a week long. And then the guild needs to meet their 
uh, point value. If, if I was able to invade this week, it would show up right here. It'll have like a little tracker. Um, and so as you saw, I earned 30,000 points right there. I can do that once a day. All week. So I can earn 150,000 points. A little more than that, close to 200,000 by myself. <laughs> and if you get your guildmates to do that, um, you only need a couple of you to meet the small yield. So you can definitely do a small yield very easily, minimal effort with a small guild. And then you'll get all the sweet, sweet, sweet rewards that um, the personal ones will show up whenever the person individually completes it. And the guild ones show up on uh, Tuesday morning. So when it when it flips over and resets. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Okay, so like, let's see. What else did we want to talk about? Right, so um, I told you I would come back to this uh, guild window in the social tab once we looked at a bunch of other things. So we got the log. You can see we've invited people. It shows I purchased a guild bank. It shows some members left or I kicked them out, stuff like that. And uh, now this section here shows our guild invasions. Um, what is our, our boost? We get... Uh, extra reputation boost based on how many members we have. We get an XP boost based on how many members we have. We get a, a renowned XP boost based on how many members we have. And you can actually... Oh, here you go. It'll If you hover over this symbol, this is your guild level. It's kind of, kind of uh, interesting. Oh, it's not based on members anymore, is it? Is it based on your guild points? This changed since the game first came out. Sorry. <laughs> we'll look at that next. That's going to be in the perks tab. You can roll over this and see where the next uh, boosts are coming in at and what's going to be next. If you need to go invade for conquest, you can click guild invasions. And these are going to be your guild perks, um, which we'll show next. You also have these things called the message of the day and the description. Um, so these are some fun little stuff that you can edit with the edit guild profile. This is not something most of your guildmates will have access to. You have to give them permission. So message of the day. I can say, hey, everybody. Happy Monday. And now um, people can see this and you can change it. And it'll actually pop up on the screen when the player logs in if they're in the guild. And next is uh, description. We... Uh, get it together, Hawkins. So you might want to put, like, what what is your guild about? Um, like, we like to do flashpoints, or uh, we like to do PvP. We like to just be social and hang out. We have a Mandalorian-themed guild, whatever. Hello. We are looking for seaworthy salesmen. Men. And, oh, seaworthy... Um, space pirates, yeah. And apparently there are some tags. I don't know if we ever... If these are used anywhere. I think they maybe wanted to make like a search function, but they never bothered. <laughs> maybe we will have in the future. So I'm going to tag it as casual friendly. And I'm going to tag it as skill level. We're going to tag it as training grounds. So we're training new pirates. Player types, beginner friendly. Oh, beginner friendly, family friendly, diversity friendly, and adults. Apparently you're only allowed to be one or the other. And guild atmosphere, fun, humor, active mentor, serious players, leaderboard or bust. <laughs> I've never even looked at this before. It's so bad. By the way, if you're looking to actually use these tags, advertise your guild or find a guild with tags, please visit the tool that we made because Bioware sucked, aka it didn't exist, and go to sotorfancommunity.com slash guilds as we've basically taken this concept put it online on a website and then it ton times better but if you do want to advertise your guild in game there is a cool little function that you can use um you'll see people advertising their guild in general chat i'm gonna do it just in in say chat so i'm i'm not obnoxious and uh you can click this button it's very tiny add a hyperlink for your guild inspect to chat to do summons is recruiting new. I'm gonna, I can I can type a message. We are looking for pie slinging gun slinging buccaneers, and then people can see that and they can click this, 
and actually look at your guild. This is a cool function that has been added since the game first started. They can actually see how many how many actual members are there. Um, what kind of boosts do we have? What are the little guild tags we've typed? Um, strangely, they can't see our description or our recruiting info that we typed in there or anything. Well, <laughs> someone's best guild. Someone's is full of porgs. So yeah, you can see my guildmates also have access to be able to share their guild there. Um, family friendly, no adults. <laughs> And uh, if you want to just see it without having to put it into chat, boop, there's a little uh, spyglass icon, a little search icon, and it'll show you what it looks like. Ooh, you guys want to see something extra cool? This is a long video. There's a lot of stuff when it comes to guilds uh, that has been added over the years. You'll notice when I'm clicking this, there's a banner that shows up, an imperial banner. This is not saying it's imperial only guild. It's saying that this is my guild banner, that once I have access to guild heraldry, can you do that from, from the moment you make your guild, guys, or do you need a flagship? I'm asking my live chat, sorry. Um, no, you guys do not need beds. You're going to sleep on the floor. That's swab the poop deck, okay? You can actually make your own flag. So, um... You have access to a bunch of different uh, settings for this flag that people will see in a couple different ways, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, I wanted to make a It's Not Easy Being Green flag. flag. Uh, they don't have a frog, so I think I'm gonna, gonna go with uh, this little mouse droid right here. And each of the icons, this is a general idea of what it will look like. And then you can pick the colors and also the background separately here. So I'm gonna go with whatever, whatever this freaky, freaky icon is. Because it's the closest thing I can see to lily pads. So I'm gonna click on my symbol. I can choose uh, any color in the whole rainbow. It's a very, very cool little setting. And I'm gonna click the background. I can click my first color. Uh, I think I'm gonna make it like white with like a, and a green tinge. And there's a bunch of different cool little options there um, that I really like. I think this is pretty cool. This will do. I think the editor is like personally pretty decent compared to some other games that I've seen. Um, but you cannot choose your own symbol that's not on the list. And you cannot choose your own background. And you cannot choose which parts are colored. For example, if I wanted the eyeball to be a third color, I can't do that. Um, but it's pretty, pretty decent uh, within Sotor's engine. Cool. Okay. Oh, oh no, I forgot to save it. Oh, just so sad. One second. Let's let's remake. Let's remake it really fast. Light game. So yeah, don't forget to save. You ding dongs. Green. Um, we got the little lily pads. Green. Oh no, white. And and green. Oh, guild heraldry, heraldry costs 1 million credits to update. Well, I learned something new today. Apparently your guild, ma guild bank needs uh, 1 million credits, so let's go put that in there real fast. What? One, two, three. One, two, three. Update! Hooray! Hooray! Yay! So here's what's fun. So first off, when I click summons, it'll show my little... <laughs> well, it's not easy being green flag. But also, um, I think I need to maybe turn the setting on in this character. Hang on. Nameplate, show guild heraldry. This is, I believe, on by default. Now, y'all can see it's very tiny. I'll, hopefully, you can see it. Uh, there's a little icon beside my guildmate's name that shows that it's not easy being green. Little symbol right there that we chose. It's kind of like it's not perfect. You might want to play with uh, the guild flag. Because as you can see, like, you can't see my lily pads anymore. It just kind of did its best to guess what it should look like um, in the background for the little icons. But yeah, if you ever see someone with a icon to the left of their name, that is very likely their guild icon. And on the right-hand side, players can choose their own little icon. So Hot Hail here actually has uh, the Not Easy Being Green logo and also a little snowflake logo and the snowflake one is a personal one that they picked up along the way okay next next 
Okay, so next is guild perks. And you guys are going to have to help me a little bit. Because uh, I don't know about these as much as I do everything else in the game. So when you click on guild perks, uh, you'll notice right away everything is like just blacked out. Like none of this is available to you. Um, this is because we need to unlock additional bays for our flagship. And once you have, you'll be able to uh, choose between these perks. And these perks cost um, different things. So for example, this one, if I wanted to give uh, extra renown points for all level 75 players, which is cool, I would have to pay 900,000 credits. And it looks like you need to be level 1 or higher guild. However, if uh, I wanted to choose one of these other ones, there's a harvesting boost for crafting costs. 750,000 credits, but it also costs guild commendations. And uh, I know you can check how many guild commendations you have down here on the bottom right. It'll show your credits and your guild commendations. It also shows it to you in your guild tab. If anyone watching this in the live chat could explain how you get guild commendations, I would love to know. This is like a part of the game that came way after I was a guild leader. Um, and so the other things you may need are a uh, credits, guild commendations, and a reinforcement module. So remember we were talking about conquest gives us some cool rewards that helps us unlock our flagship? It can also give us these reinforcement components and a player can get 10 of those. They're, they're bound to your character. Get 10, combine them, and it'll make a reinforcement module. Ah, so um, our player in chat says to get kill guild commendations, you need to meet the minimum uh, conquest for that week for your guild. So if we chose a small guild, we reached 500,000. We would get also for our guild, guild commendations to spend on guild perks. Woo! And lastly, some of these also have a requirement like guild must be level 12 or higher. Guild must be level 64 or higher. Meanwhile, we're level one and haven't even unlocked any of the bays of our ship. In addition, in addition to perks, uh, the ones that you choose manually here, you'll notice they have a little symbol beside them. You can get a set bonus perk and they are located in the bottom left. Uh, if you're getting serious about this, you'll want to hover over them and read them. Basically, uh, how do you get a set bonus? I think you need um, a handful of the same type. So for example, you can see this is the glory set bonus and you'll see the glory icon right here. So you would need to get uh, maybe one glory one here, one glory one down here, one glory one uh, over here, whatever, you know. And uh, the important part is that some of these are extremely powerful and some players join guilds specifically for them. Um, so some players join a guild for the atmosphere to hang out, be social. Some guilds join for conquest and conquest rewards to do those large yield planets because they give even, even better rewards than the small yield one. And lastly, uh, there is one of the boosts called zeal and this is an alacrity boost. And alacrity is one of your stats on your character sheet. And it can really do some crazy stuff. And I'll explain that in a second. So I do not believe you can have all of these at once. So you kind of have to pick and choose your set bonus and also compare it. Maybe there's a, maybe there's just a set of different um, non set bonus matchy matchy ones that you really want in the list for whatever your guild's goals are. Um, so for example, a good general one to get is the glory set bonus. Gives you renown points, XP and reputation boost. Nice. Um, and then the zeal set bonus is another one that's very popular as it gives you a 5% alacrity boost. Um, alacrity in the game helps you to cast your abilities faster. So if you're going like shoom, shoom, shoom with your force lightning, adding more alacrity will make you go shoom, 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 shoom. <laughs> 
allow you to click the buttons faster instead of having to wait for them to do that global cooldown, the little tiny timer that happens. Um, and uh, the higher your alacrity, the more seconds, or I guess tenths of a second that goes down. And if you don't have to put points in your gear into alacrity because you have the guild um, set bonus boost, then you can put those points into other stuff like crit so you can do more damage and it's awesome. And pew pew but faster. Yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, for example, my guild, uh, the one that I'm in normally, this is just like a test guild, uh, I believe we usually do the glory set bonus or we pick ones that are useful for whatever we're doing for the day because we're general, very general, do what you want kind of guild. Um, a raiding guild that likes to do operations, especially like nightmare mode raiding or master mode raiding, whatever you want to call it these days, really wants to get hold of that zeal set bonus because although 5% is small number wise, it's big, big stats wise, really, really huge boost. Okay, and uh, I think we may have been getting close to the end of everything I have to show you. Um, so your perks will show up here once you've chosen them. Oh, I can choose one for the docking bay and the bridge? Hang on here. Bridge. Oh, I just don't have enough credits in there. Oh, awesome. Okay, let's put some credits in the guild bay. <laughs> so it will let you pick a coal to start with. I lied. This is the worst guide ever. I'm having to learn everything on the spot because you can't test all of this unless you have a guild. <laughs> okay. Perks. Now that we have money in the guild bank, it's saying uh, for the bridge and for the docking bay, we can choose up to two of those perks. So let's, um, let's actually see if we can get a glory one. And they do change, I believe, each week. Uh, I don't think we can get a glory set bonus, but we can get the um, might set bonus. So let's do that. Oh, I lied. We can't even get that one yet. Oh, no. We don't have any guild commendations yet, so we're kind of working with a brand new guild, but I'll show you what it looks like. Um, increases reputation earned by all sources by 5%. Let's purchase this one. It only requires credits. Purchase. But a boom Now everyone in the guild has access to this uh, reputation little boost here, and it'll tell you exactly how long it'll last. It, um, it also tells you when you roll over it. I lied. Some are... Um, this one's, for example, is two weeks. This one's like 28 days, so about a month. And it, each one is different, so make sure to check it before you click it. Um, and most of them are passive. They just happen whether the guild member wants them or not. But there is a super, super small amount of them that are that become a ability that you click. I believe it's in the guild tab. You can see this one's passive. Some of them will be active that you have to click. So you like choose when you want to use it. Usually gives you like a renown boost. So you want to use it for your maybe doing an operation or something like that for the most maximum. Oh, oh, important. Perks don't work in nightmare mode. Right? Very important. Um, the zeal boost or just normal perks. So let me know. <laughs> Let me know, live chat. Um, let's see what else is there. So we purchased one. We can do another one in the docking bay. And as we unlock more levels of our ship, that's when we'll be able to add these other ones and more likely be able to get a, a set bonus for our guild. Okay, so perks never work in nightmare mode or master mode. So these alacrity boosts are only going to be for story mode and veteran mode um, when it comes to operations. Okay, gone over the perks tab. We've gone over the ranks and what they can do and not do. Um, so now that we know what a lot of these settings do, I can give my officers permission to edit the guild perks for when I'm not online. Um, I can, oh, we have guild mail. I don't even know how to send guild mail. <laughs> Let's see how that works. Mail. So when you are the guild leader or you have um, the permission set as an officer to compose a guild mail, you say, hello, everybody. Um, give me all your credits or your life. So usually what this is used for is, oh, hey, we have this cool event coming up next week. Here's the, the date, the time, the time zone, and how to participate. 
would be the most common one. About this. No, we got a good feeling about this. Um, maybe we have we're setting up an operation next week. What role can you play? It's really useful to get messages out in game to people who are not currently online. If you're a more organized guild, you'll want to use some type of system out of game. So this can be once again Discord. This can be a forum. This can be a Facebook group. This can be a text chat whatever it is so you don't have to necessarily log in in game for example the first thing a flesh raider baby <laughs> sorry i forgot to turn that off because we're live recording you guys are <laughs> um if you're setting up a raid group for example you'd want everyone to see that as soon as possible so they can say oh i'm available to heal or whatever and it will send you a copy of the mail and what's cool is it will have this symbol in the back when you get a normal mail, it doesn't have anything in the back. And when you get a guild mail, it has this symbol in the back. So players can really easily see what has been uh, sent to everyone in the guild. That is not just a private message just for them. So you guys don't get permission to do guild mail because I don't trust you. <laughs> you can see all my guildmates are going to the, <laughs> to the mailbox now. <laughs> Message of the day. Um, that was the little thing that will pop up. Like, hello everybody, happy Monday. Guilt description. I don't. I don't even know what that's used for, where it shows up. But get it together, Hawkins. Guild inspect recruiting. Um, that's I think so you can. Well, we already found out everyone was already able to do that, so I'm not quite sure what that uh, checkbox does. Guild heraldry. I wouldn't give anyone permission to edit this. Um, because there's a good chance they'll they'll mess with it, um, unless it's someone you really trust. So I'm gonna not give permission for that. <laughs> They're trying to make me laugh because I'm recording this live. Okay, um, conquest. So I'm actually gonna give my officers the ability to invade a planet. So like, let's say next Tuesday, I'm not online. I'm I'm gone for the day. Um, my officers can go pick a planet to invade. Once again, you kind of want to be careful with that permission because it's. I, I'm not even sure you can change once you've picked it, picked it for the week, but uh, you give it to people you trust to understand, like, yep, we're going to go for a small yield every week, or yep, make your good decision based on uh, what, how much activity you're seeing in the guild. So member management, you'll have invite, set rank, remove from guild, and uh, oh, here's a fun little one, set primary. Um, so in my main guild, um, what we do is we write, write everyone's names beside in the uh, member note, as I showed you very early on in the video. And let's say uh, Intisar has multiple characters. You can right click uh, one of their characters in the guild roster and uh, set as primary. It's not a very obvious function what it does, um, but it'll tell everybody in the guild who knows what that means this is my main character. If you want to send me some crafting materials to craft you something, if you need to send me a mail, if you need to uh, send me some items in general, if you're looking to get a hold of me, this is probably the character I'm going to be on most of the time. Um, you can put that little star beside your name. That's that's all that really means. Um, unfortunately, most of the time, by default, the players cannot set their own. But you can tell them to uh, give them permission. So now even my recruits can go in and right click their name and set as primary. Um, let's see what else is in here. And officer chat, view or send. Guild chat, view or send. And you can do that for each rank. And once again, to add a rank of potato. Um, if I want it to be up and down in the permissions list, like for example, a recruit, even if they had permission to remove, I don't think they could remove an officer. Don't quote me on that. But you can move the, uh... <laughs> it was just warning me about the security key. You can actually move the order of the ranks and show what they do. And you can also, uh, you can't rename them. Oh, you can! Nice! I'm going to leave mine as Guildmaster, but you can totally edit rank name, potato, potato, if you need to rename them. Some useful ones to make um, are like, uh, in my guild we have trial member, full member, uh, officers, assistants, Guildmaster, and we also have a separate rank for our crafting officer only. 
that gives them um, the ability to remove and add things um, in a lot higher amount. This is one we set up manually. So for example, the PVP officer cannot remove 9,000 items from the bank, but the crafting officer can. And uh, how many does it say how many you can have? You still only be able to have a very small amount, but I think you can have quite a few different ranks now. It's not like in the hundreds or anything, but uh, you can add quite a few. Let's let's test one. Test two. Test three. Test four. Test five. Six. Test nine. Um, question to those who are helping me test. Um, do any of you have a large amount of credits, like in the hundreds of millions, and want to make a really good deal? Because I have items. I can, I can, you can, I can sell to you. No, you can sell to me. No, I have items I can sell to you. You give me credits, and then you can take those items and go sell them for double. Does anyone, does anyone fit that requirements on our Satil Shan? <laughs> Server tests. 16. Man, just keeps going. I don't know. Is there still. Okay, here we go. So we can have 1, 2, Until 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, there we go. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you can have a total of 20 ranks, including the guild master. So the guild master plus 19 in your guild. So that uh, that can make it work. MM Scion, you have you have a ton. You're M Scion X. Okay, hang on. M Scion X. Oh, you're already in a guild, so I'll just invite you to group. Invite M Scion X. So here's another cool feature. If someone's not in your guild. You can still invite them to the flagship. You have to uh, open the strongholds panel. Open your guild panel. And once they're in a group with you, whether they're a small group or it's like a group of like 24 people, click invites and click invite group. Nice. Okay, let's see what I got in here, Emsion. I got some good stuff. Oh, not in the guild bank though. Oh, not in my personal bag. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, I've got hyper crates. Let's see. We're gonna sell them to you for like ah, half price so we can have some credits. Cause we're doing it live. Have a great, have a great search. Oh my God. So on this server, they are worth 528 million at the time. So M Cyan. Do you want to buy some of these for half price from me? Um, do you have like 250 million? Or do you have, do you have, how many would you like to buy? You have 200, oh, 208. Okay, sweet. Let's just do that for now. We'll just trade trade one. Do you want to do that? Because you can sell this thing in like five seconds if you sell it for a slightly under market value. Oh, sweet! You gave me all 208 million! <laughs> so I'm happy about this. So MMSI just made like an easy 300 million. <laughs> I wanted to unlock the rest of these these uh, tabs. So add a bank vault. The next one is going to be we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number eight is going to be sixty million, and that's it. There's no more. You can only have eight tabs total. Sweet. I am having trouble remembering what the other thing we were trying to show was. Oh, maybe the guild perks? Because I ran out of credits. We're gonna pick efficiency missions. Because there's not really any fun ones. Dun, dun, dun. I 
think we are looking at the their permissions, right? Mm hmm. And the officer rank. Okay, cool. So um, the last thing, not the last thing by any means. There's there's always more. I feel like when it comes to guilds. So guild tab, you can set the officer note, which only officers can see. So for example, this this member has been a bit of a troublemaker. Keep an eye on them. Um, set member note, this is Bob. Set as primary, this is my main character, and you can allow members to put their own of those two. Remove from guild, set rank, and ban from the guild. Ban from the guild, I don't know exactly how it functions, but it's not the same as remove from guild. It means they cannot rejoin afterwards. I believe it means they cannot rejoin on any other characters on their account, but I am not entirely sure about that one. Okay, so I was going to see if I could unlock uh, a tab uh, uh one of the rooms. So we need a framework, right? I don't even know how much those, those go for. So we can get a framework. Oh, we can afford one. Nice. Do we just need one or do we need a bunch? So we're going to look for a command framework. So you can earn these over time. Or you can trade in a bunch of encryptions for a framework. And the encryptions are the ones that you get from Conquest. One of my guildmates replied to my... Uh, <laughs> to my little mail there. Oh, they're making... Never mind. You need uh, three or four. <laughs> you don't need one. You need zero out of five, and you have to make sure to put it in your guild bank. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, right. In addition to a flagship, which takes quite a bit of work to get, you can also get a guild stronghold. This is more similar to the normal player housing. And I'm going to head down to the fleet. If you ever can't figure out how to escape the flagship, above your minimap, I know mine's very tiny, it says exit area. And you can exit to the fleet, exit to where you were, exit starship. There's there's a bunch of different options. So we're going to go to the strongholds and crew skills section of the fleet. To figure out where that is, press M on your map. It'll be a different spot, Imperial and Republic side. For Imperial side, we're, uh, we're already right here. Right across from the guild registrar. And these are the options available for guild uh, guild player housing. Um, there is a new stronghold that just came out called Republic and Imperial Fleet. So Carrick Station and Viking Space Dock. But as far as we can tell, those are not available for the guild. And I'm not sure about the Umbara train one. Maybe someone in our live chat can let us know. Um, so you can pick from Narshada, Manon, Droman Kos, or Coruscant if you're Republic side. Alderaan, Yavin 4, Tatooine, and Rishi. Uh, the important thing to know is that it's a lot more expensive to unlock it for your guild. So, if I'm purchasing it for myself... Oh, I already have it. This, is not, this one's not a good example. Oh, why do I have them all already? Let's, let's delete one. Let's uh, delete... What's one I would have bought with credits? Oh, I don't have Tatooine perfect on this server. Um, so if I wanted to buy it for myself and my characters only, it only costs two and a half million credits. A lot, but manageable. If you want to get it for your guild, it costs 15 million credits because everybody in the guild can now use it. It's going to be like a shared asset. So once again, this is one of those... Why does it cost more than a flagship? It didn't used to be that way. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna put in uh, the the 15 million or whatever. Let's put in 40 million. One more zero there. Uh, they adjusted the flagship prices, but they didn't lower the stronghold prices, which I think is fine. The flagship's very functional. The strongholds are very much cosmetic. So I'm going to purchase the Tatooine Stronghold. Once again, I had all those choices earlier. And I believe I can only have one Guild Stronghold. You can't, like, go nuts and, uh... You can only have one. One Guild one. So you might want to pick carefully. Um, 
we I think we put ours to like a poll poll uh, like our people could weigh in what they wanted. So now, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. Keys. So for both our flagship and our new stronghold that's shared with our guild and anybody in the guild can visit them by default. There's also some uh, permissions available. So the permission to decorate. You need to press keys on the stronghold window. And let's uh, give Hot Hail permission to decorate. We need to give them a gold key to decorate. This gold key doesn't exist in personal strongholds. You cannot let someone else decorate your personal stronghold, but you can let others decorate your guild flagship. The other version is silver, and I think silver lets you invite players who are not in the guild. And it also lets you pick up those crafting material decoration things. It's weird. The key system is unfortunately really bad. You have to do everyone manually. And if you have a really big list of, of character names, it's almost impossible to, <laughs> to figure out um, where their name's going to be in the list. I don't believe it's alphabetical. Um, at the moment, looking at it right now, I believe it's in order of when they joined the guild. So I was first, then Hot Hail I invited to our group next, and then Nantia, then Alara, then Naranti, and then the most recent person was Amaya. And it's, of course, per character, so... I recommend just giving it to them on their main character and say, if you want to decorate, make sure to only do it on your main one. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Rishi, as someone mentioned in chat, is a really interesting one to unlock. Um, that's this one right here. As it has some PvP, uh, player versus player, components to it. And a beach. I think Rishi is the one my main guild that I'm in has. So now, I can go to my guild. I can travel to my personal stronghold, or my guild stronghold, guild player housing. Let me switch over to my normal interface. Uh, once again, I can edit it. I can, as the guild leader, press edit mode. And if I want to give that edit mode to anyone else, I need to give them I need to give them that key in the guild stronghold panel. So let's uh, let's give everyone here a key if you guys want to decorate anyone online who's still in the in the guild. Um, there you go. You guys can now all have the ability to decorate, and you always had the ability to attend. So once again, I'd probably put a bunch of guild banks here, and then the rest uh, I'd just go wild crazy. I don't think we have any ships yet, but we'll be able to put them down here and. Uh, Guilds tend to, especially now with the price decrease for a flagship, you use your flagship as your main one. And then if you have extra credits, you unlock a stronghold and you can use it as like a, a roleplay center or a party area. So for example, maybe I could make this into a, a resort or I could make it to our secret hideout and we could just hang out here, take pictures, or maybe we just like this area for a guild bank because it's a beautiful view. Whatever you want to do. Um, the important thing to know is a flagship is what allows you to do conquest and summons. Oh, we should talk about that next. Speaking of which, um, and a stronghold for your guild is just for fun. And uh, let's see how much it costs to go unlock the outside room. Yeah, this one is a very expensive one. You can get the uh, Droman Cost one for quite quite cheap. And Coruscant if you're Republic side. So if I wanted to go, say, unlock another room for my guild. Once again, I need those guild uh, bank funds. I need to put those in. And it costs like 3 million credits to expand it. That's more than the, the, <laughs> the stronghold cost to get in the first place for an uh, individual player. So now I'm going to show you summons. Summons are one of my favorite things that have been added to the game since the launch of the game in terms of quality of life. Um, so you'll notice me specifically, I do all kinds of events that are open to a lot of people. Um, if you saw the Bantha video, we made a huge use of summons to make that a lot easier to get everyone in the same place at once. Okay. 
Anyone who's in our little little party time. Oh, you know what? Um, who's online? Let's. I can right click them and invite them to the group from the guild panel, which is super nice too. Sweet. So if you're doing an event, um, and you have a group going. <laughs> My group already knows what's up. If you want to have only up to four players, you can just right click their name, invite to group, or type slash invite like we did at the very beginning of the of this video. If you want to invite up to 24 people to something, for example, you're doing a world boss would be a best example. You would right click on your character portrait and group, convert to ops group. Now, you'll notice it didn't work. It didn't do anything. It's being a pain in the butt. So look in the other tab, and it says, Cannot convert to an ops group because some members are inside a phase. I see Naranti's on Hoth, Alara's on the Imperial Fleet. I'm going to kick out Naranti. Very... Did it work? Oh, I... <laughs> Naranti, um, can you... You promote me to group leader. I accidentally promoted them to group leader instead of kicking them out of the group. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, Naranti just converted it to a summoning group. But either way, once everyone's out of phase, you can convert it to an ops group if you're trying to do a big group. You can have up to 24 people. If you can't see them all, you can press escape interface editor. And it means you just have like... Um, I don't know. They might be hidden. Um, and you can, once your group is all ready to go, make sure everyone who's supposed to be in the group is in the group. Like, it's better to wait a few minutes um, than to do this. You can right-click your portrait if you have permission. Group, summon group via flagship. And it costs, I think, 20,000 credits? Very minimal amount for um, how cool this function is. Did it work? Says it was accepted. What happened? <laughs> We're doing it live. Oh, here we go. There we go. So Naranti accepted the summons. It shows up as a little pop up. It makes a sound <laughs> kind of like that. Um, kind of like you got a mail, and it shows up in the top left. And you had to press accept. So both Naranti and it looks like. Um, Alara is loading in too. Press accept. It'll look like a red check mark or a a red X or a green check mark. Tell your group, please accept summons. If you need to make this more obvious as the group lead, type slash RA. And this will make a hello, a pop up. Please accept the summon. Green check mark. So these two, these two already did it. Good job. Um, you'll notice that sometimes your group members are like, Oh my god! This summon's not working! Ah! Um, this is because if you're in a spaceport, or too close to a shuttle, like for on Voss, there's a shuttle on the floor, tell them to get out of the spaceport, the space station, or away from the landing zone, and then they should be able to accept it. So that's super nice. So you can uh, invite up to 24 people into your group, summon them to the same location. And unfortunately, when you go to summon again... So group summon group via flagship. Nothing happens. Oh no, Bob wasn't in the group and I can't summon him now. Why? This is because... Um, you can only use it roughly every... I thought it was every 20 minutes, but it's saying I still have about uh, 30 minutes left on my timer. And uh, what we usually do is we go into our, our ranks permission. 
And as long as we've got some credits in the guild bank, we actually give everyone in the guild permission to summon. Now that's not going to be in here. This is going to be in our guild bank settings. So I'm going to leave you guys forever. Bye! I'm going to go back to our flagship. And if you can't get people into your ops group and you can't convert it to an ops group, they're probably in an instance. They could be in their player stronghold. They could be in the freaking guild flagship. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, and uh, one of our players in chat is saying, like, for example, uh, if you're doing... You don't have to be doing a large guild event. Um, it could be if you are doing, like, a small group event of four players and not everyone has that area unlocked. The veteran, experienced player, can run over, summon their group, and then you guys can go play together. And this is why I love this feature so much. So let's go into the um, Manage tab. Now that we have a flagship, the Summon tick, the Summon checkbox is now available. So what I like to do, um, and this is a recent thing that they changed, I really like. So unfortunately you can't do it for like all ranks at once, so you'd have to go one by one. I'm going to start with the officer rank. I'm going to say they're allowed to spend 200,000 credits a week, so 10 summons a week. But they cannot take the 200,000 credits out, and maybe I don't want to use them to repair. They can use their own credits to repair their gear, but they can summon. So they can summon 10 times within the week because it costs 20,000 credits each. Um, and I'd say put this up as high as you feel comfortable because summons are glorious. And uh, now uh, they changed the system so it's very safe. You can summon, but not just take credits to go spend on fashion Barbie. And uh, so that's very cool. Apply, and I'll do it for my recruits too. We'll let them summon. We'll let them summon um, only twice a week. So that'll be 40,000 credits. Now, one important thing to know is players to have access to the guild bank there is a guild bank um unlock like it's a it's an item so unlock guild bank access for free to play and preferred players to have access to items in the guild bank they will need this however this is the important part i don't really recommend that unlock a lot it's not really worth it unless you're like really heavily invested in your guild they will not have access to credits no matter what um this is a kind of credit hoarding prevention mechanic um because they have a credit limit of 1 million credits they don't buy or doesn't want you to just go throw the credits into the <laughs> into your guild bank it's less important these days because of the legacy bank but it was important back in the day so um Preferred and free-to-play players do not have access to guild funds, even if they have the guild bank unlock for items. Why this is important is because summons are tied to guild bank funds. So, no matter how generous you are, your free-to-play and preferred guildmates will not be able to summon other players. However, one really cool feature about this is only the summoner, the person summoning, needs to have the permission and the uh, like ability to summon. Everybody else in the group is fine. You can be free to play, you can be preferred, you can be in the guild, you can not be in the guild, you can be brand new to the game. The only requirement to be summoned is you must have your ship in the story. So uh, a level 1 character could definitely not be summoned. Um, a level 10 character could maybe be summoned, but I doubt it. But a level 15 character or up is where it gets tricky. Um, so if they're level 15, they've maybe finished their starter planet and maybe finish Droman Koss or Coruscant. If they have finished Droman Koss or Coruscant and earned their ship, they will be able to be summoned. Their level doesn't matter. However, they could also be level 75. They PvP'd their way to level 75 and they never even left their starter planet. They will not be able to be summoned. It's a mechanic that exists so that characters don't accidentally get stuck and can't go back to their main planet where they need to finish their story. And I believe if that happens, you can see see it pop up here. And the player definitely, I think, gets some type of message if they're trying to press accept. 
Oh, there's so many things involving guilds. I think we're getting close to the end. Um, dear, dear live chat, do any of you have anything else that you think we should add? Um, unlocking the flagship. So I said there's a couple different ways. So you've got conquest and the guild conquest gets you the encryptions. I think you can turn the encryptions in on the fleet. Let me go check real fast. You can get them from the Galactic Trade Network, either the completed framework, which is the purple version, or the individual encryptions, the blue versions. Players often sell these because they got them from Conquest and they're like, my guild, guild doesn't need these. And then... Uh, A flesh raider, baby. <laughs> um... And lastly, there are some special enemies that you can kill out in the open world. These are called, uh, I think they're usually called dark versus light bosses. There's the dark versus light event from way back when, and the dark versus light system. And you can see the system is right here. And uh, when certain factions are winning, or dark side and light side are winning, then sometimes these special bosses appear and sometimes these special bosses have a shield so you can't attack them. Ala, uh, I don't remember as much of that off the top of my head. So where were we heading? Uh, I was gonna head to the strongholds and crew skills section and see if I, what, what the vendor looks like for turning in encryptions or unlocking your ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Extra has got a point. You can also move the flagship. Let's show you guys that next. I think I totally went to the wrong section. I'm sorry. I have a glass of chocolate milk and I have a glass of water and my glass of water is a tank and I just smashed my glass of chocolate milk and shattered it. <laughs> we'll carry on! We're doing it live! Okay. Next up. There's these vendors. Sweet. Did you mention how your guild can level up? No. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that in chat? And I'll make sure to put the right info in here. Okay, so conquest rewards. There's a vendor here. This is where we set up our guild originally that has conquest rewards. It's kind of hilarious because most of these have nothing to do with conquest um, or guilds. There is another vendor right beside it called the Planetary Conquest Equipment. This we'll is fun. Find a better bargain. Um, if your guild happens to get in Conquest on the leaderboard for most amount of points, and if you get first place, you can uh, buy this cool speeder. But I wouldn't even bother trying, to be honest, <laughs> with the way Conquest are right now, but it exists. There's also this uh, fun item. Um, this is the item that you could use to, uh... Okay, here's what the item says. Calls in a starfighter strafing run that knocks out planetary defense shielding and does heavy damage to area around your target. Once control has been established over a planet's orbital perimeter, frequent airstrikes can be called in at just about any coordinates as long as the supply lines remain secure. Your guild must control the planet on which you activate this item. So, same as this, uh... Strong uh, speeder. Come back you anytime. have to be the current controller of the guild, and you get that by being first on that leaderboard, like the previous week. I don't think this is the vendor I was looking for. What this can one? I get for you? <gasps> ah, here we go. Um, so when you're doing conquests and you get these blue, It doesn't want to load. Oh, here we go. Um, you get these blue flagship plans encryptions. You can take 50 of them of the same type. Maybe they're all yours. More likely they would be maybe ones that uh, players of your guild donate to the guild bank. It would be a lot of play uh, guilds request, hey, if you get an encryption, you can keep everything else here. But it would be nice if you donate the encryption so I'm we can unlock our flagship. And then you can take 50 of those and turn them in for a framework. And then as you saw, for the very first room in the flagship, the command one, you need five frameworks. So you need you won't find a better bargain. five times 50 of the little blue ones. 250 encryptions. So it's going to take you a while. Come really going to take you a while. Um, next, let's go check out moving the flagship. Luckily, my computer loads fast so we can hop back and forth all we want.
The milk stayed in the glass, like it's just cracked and I probably shouldn't drink from it unless I want to have a, a very beautiful smile. So this is once again something that requires permission. Um, I'm in the flagship. As the guild leader, I can head over here. I believe uh, it's the same permission as the ability to do conquest. At the front of the flagship. Oh, look how cool that is! Oh, it's so good! <laughs> oh. Well, anyways, you can see all the amazing ships out here because I believe we're on the uh, Imperial fleet. The flagship can be moved, so you can use this as a couple different ways. Uh, you can move the flagship. Let's say I want to go over... We I've been doing... A... Oh, let's go over Ilum because the Gree event is coming up next week. So you can move the flagship. It costs a bit of credits. Once again, you're going to need permission to the credits in the, in the guild bank to do this. And it even does the whole hyperspace thing. So if you just want to do something cool with <laughs> cool with your guild, bring them on the bridge and move the ship. <laughs> it's like... And uh, it's not too expensive. It's like 10, 11,000, whatever. I think it has a little bit to do with um, how many times you've moved it recently or how far it is. Like Dantooine costs a whole 13,000 credits. Let's do it again. And you can decorate this too. You can put a bunch of chairs over here if you want. Make it extra cool. And the other option that's here is orbital support. Um, it's not really necessary. It's just one of those fun little things. Um, you can uh, provide bonuses to damage, healing, damage reduction, and max health for all guild members on the surface of the docked planet. So the planet you're at. This effect doubles if your guild controls the sector. So if you're in first place. But what's cool is you can... You could do this. Chaboop. And now um, all, all, all my players in my guild who are on the planet of Dantooine uh, will get a bonus to damage healing and damage reduction and max health. So I, like I said, I'm going to go put that on Ilum. And uh, since I changed planets, I have to repay the fuel cost and repay the orbital support. It doesn't like stack up. So the one on Dantooine is now gone. Woohoo! So then uh, we were talking about guild levels we didn't mention yet. Right here is your guild level. When you roll over it, my ours is a whole whopping level one now. And other people can see that too. Uh, if your guild is linked or if someone inspects your guild by like right clicking. I think you can right click your character portrait. Let's see if anyone's still kicking around over here. Yes, right click character portrait. Additional commands, inspect guild. So if you want to learn about someone's guild, you totally can. Obviously this person's in our guild, but you can do that on the fleet to random people too. And it shows their guild level. And their your guild level, I believe, is through conquest. Like su successfully completing your guild conquest, but I could be wrong. Oh, it's guild XP. Oh, okay. Someone in chat, let me know how you how you actually rank up but as you rank up you get additional um uh like passive perks like reputation bonus xp bonus um renown bonus and then also the perks like we we were able to turn this one on earlier some of them require a guild level so you can't just use it right away even if you have the commendations and the credits Whew! okay do we got anything else? Guilds have a lot of features that have been, have been added over the years. Um, I think we've gotten close to going through all of them. So I hope you enjoyed this video about all the like physical aspects of unlocking things um, for your guild. And uh, it's a whole separate discussion about what type of guild do you want to have? Do you want it to be social, strict, friendly, application, open invite? Do you want to do play operations, flashpoints, um, social events, role play, player versus player, um, leveling, um, goofing off, like all of these are big questions about how do you want to rent the guild. This video is only about the things you can do 
with the game settings. So I hope this was useful to you if you're a guild leader. I'm hoping to put together a written guide that's a little more coherent and a little more ordered, but this was a really thorough overview of all of these settings about guilds in Star Wars The Old Republic. See you later!